this is an OpenMRS developer conference with the um, uh, an update or a work in progress from the Ampath developers in Kenya. And I'll let you guys go ahead and take it from here. All right, I'll introduce myself again since I'm, I'm now being recorded. This is JJ. Uh, this is Nick, uh, developer. Uh, Vincent, developer. This is Ben, developer. Kennedy, developer. Grand, developer. And fire, developer. <laughs> um, all right, so with that, um, you know, I don't, I don't think I participated in the last time that Ampath gave an update, so I'm not exactly sure what um, I'm updating from. Um, but what uh, we thought we would do is um, uh, Nikki, who uh, leads our team, um, is going to give a, kind of a brief overview of uh, our work in Angular 2. Um, and then I was going to tell you about some of the things that are uh, on our horizon um, uh, and uh, maybe get some feedback from anybody who's on the call. Okay, hey guys, uh, this is Nikki. So last time we gave an update uh, to OpenMRS, we briefly went over the Angular 1 client that we had done. We have this uh, Angular client uh, that we're using for point of care. So we went over the application itself. Uh, we went over the fomentry, Angular fomentry that we had done. We also went over the ETL uh, work that we have done, mainly reporting stuff that we have done. And so today we've, we've, uh, we've been trying to upgrade to Angular 2 in the past uh, five, six months, and uh, basically updating what we had in Angular 1 to Angular 2. And the motivations behind that was mainly performance. Uh, yeah, so we ran into some performance issues with Angular 1, mainly because our applications run on uh, tablets. So on desktops, they would perform well, but when, when it went to the, the tablet, they, they weren't that performant. So mainly the, we were facing performance challenges mainly on the, on the angular form entry and we thought it a good a, a good opportunity to to upgrade our entire application to angular 2 and so and we we timed this right around the time that angular 2 was officially released so i think it was released in august or september or october and that's right when we decided to take the plunge we also thought it's a good idea to not repeat the mistakes that we had done in Angular 1. And some of them was how we structured our applications. Uh, so this time we've made our application more modular. And when it comes a time when we need to separate out the core components that the community can benefit from, that would be very easy, easily done. Uh, already the Angular 2 for entry that we've done is used by the community. It doesn't have anything Angular, uh, I mean Ampat specific, and it's much more easier to consume that module than Angular 1, uh, the version that we did with Angular 1. Uh, it's also faster. Uh, and it offers us more opportunities to add more widgets into that uh, that's uh, that angular foment module so previously we built the previous fomentry uh, angular fomentry on top of formly uh, but we've since uh, moved away from that so we had to uh, we, we, we did we did it using reactive module reactive form modules provided by angular so it's it's much more performant, much more thinner than we had. Uh, I would like to do a, a brief demo of that client, uh, and I'll also share the GitHub links. I'm sharing my screen. I don't know if you're able to see it. Yep, we can see it now. Okay. 
Okay, so this is the login page, and I'll just sign in. Uh, so we've added a default. Uh, users get to select the default site. Then I'll use test. Uh, the located that is. So after after that, it, it, the default page is special search, just like the other one. And I'll, 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 I'll bring up a test patient. Could you hide the little notice at the bottom so we get the full screen? So after searching the patient, it takes you, uh, it gives you a list of patients, and then when you select, uh, it takes you to the patient dashboard. Uh, we chose to reorganize the UI a bit, uh, mainly to make it more usable on a tablet, given that tablets have uh, a smaller screen real estate. So the the landing page is the is the patient. Uh, information tab. It contains demographics, uh, contacts. This these are purely OpenMRS uh, features. I mean, the the data is purely OpenMRS, uh, and these are features that can be reused in the community. I mean, some of can be green. Features. I want him to see the screen too. Sorry. Uh, you look, did you hide the screen? Because we don't seem to see it again. The screen you are sharing, it's not shared anymore. It's hidden. No, I, I, what I was asking for was that you hide the notice at the bottom, not the shared screen. I think, um, I think when you, what you did is cancel the shared screen. Okay. Yeah, down at the bottom where it says stop sharing or hide. What happens if you click that hide? Does it stop sharing? That's what I was looking for. Thank you. Oh, so you're still able to see the, uh, my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, the landing page was patient, patient search. I brought up a patient named test, a test patient. So I, 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 I searched for a test patient and selected one, and it takes you to the dashboard. And so I'll go briefly over the features. So this is the main landing page. It contains the demographic information about the patient, as well as contacts, address, and identifiers, relationships, patient relationships. That, that is uh all these are purely reusable i mean people can use it from the community it's not impact specific uh so there's a ribbon up top that 
gets you the vitals for that date. The, this is the visit tab. Uh, we've organized the workflows around visits. So patients, when the patient come in, they, they, they are first registered by registering. That means starting a visit. And then yeah, some forms are filled. We have triaging forms, uh, some return forms. So once the forms are filled, uh, they, they appear under this tab as encounters, and you can navigate to each uh, form. So I'll just go straight to one of the forms so that I can demonstrate the the, the form entry version 2.0, how it looks and So this is how a form looks like. Uh, this time, still we are focusing on the tablets. We have added some some friendly features that will make using it on a tablet much easier. For example, we've added swiping. You can swipe. Uh, we tried to use some native controls, for example, for some drop downs, uh, etc. Uh, the forms are much faster, about seven to ten times faster. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, we have some other features that were, were there previously, like the vitals, uh, historical vitals, that is, we have some historical labs. All these are data that we extracted and stored it somewhere to make it easier to access basically your ITL features. So, okay. so um, you know, Nikki's just giving you kind of a brief overview. Um, essentially, what we've decided to do is to roll out our Angular 2 version in phases. Um, you know, it was a hard decision for us to, dis, to to make to go to Angular 2. You know, essentially, we've been rewriting code for the past few months. But um, for us, we think it was a worthy investment. Um, the organization of Angular 2 in terms of the modules is a much, much cleaner uh, way of approaching coding um, as compared to Angular 1. Um, and then we use TypeScript as well, which I think has been um, uh, really a good thing for us moving forward as it makes it easier for debugging downstream. Um, and, you know, we just think that Angular, Angular 2's performance is so much greater than Angular 1's, it, it really is a no-brainer. Um, so, as I was saying, we approach this in phases. We started out with the patient dashboard, um, and we've actually already begun, uh, and form entry, we've already begun testing this. Um, and uh, we've basically completed clinical testing this past week, or this week and um, are uh, starting to roll it out into our sites. So just as kind of a background of AMPATH, which maybe I should have given in the beginning, was that um, we're you know, primarily an HIV care program in Western Virginia. Um, our care system is around 80,000 patients with HIV. Um, and uh, we have uh, many, many clinics, something like uh, over 100 clinics where we provide some form of support. Um, but we have about 24 high volume facilities which have more than 500 patients. Um, and at every one of our high volume facilities, except for one, we're using um, the point of care tool that uh, uh, you've seen. Really, most sites are still using version 1.x. Um, and uh, over the course of the next month, we'll actually be making trips to every single site and um, switching them over to version two. Um, during this time, we're still um, building on the features of 
um, that are more for analytical purposes and reporting. Um, so things like the ability to generate the Ministry of Health reports, um, to uh, generate any of the indicators that we've decided are important for our own monitoring and evaluation. Um, all of those will come later and we just figured that there's, there's not going to be much of a difference from 1.x. Um, they're going to produce the same data. So for people who want to use that, they can continue to use the 1.x interface. Um, so kind of moving forward, we'll be working on our clinic dashboard. Um, and uh, that's, if we can um, bring up uh, the old um, version. Um, now, one thing that um, we, we moved to over the past, uh, really in version 1.x, is the use of the orders API from OpenMR strongly support. Um, we started out, uh, our use case for that was specifically for laboratory tests. Um, uh, and so, well, but moving forward, I'm hoping that we will also move our pharmacy um, uh, orders to the orders API rather than doing them as just ops um, uh, for, for many reasons. Um, and one of the things that I wanted to discuss today was people's experiences using the orders API with pharmaceuticals. Um, essentially, um, you know, I, ideally we'll start off with a use case where um, we'll have a very generic um, uh, kind of form to look up drugs and then some way of defaulting um, the kind of common um, dosages and routes and all the other information that um, uh, should be probably in the drug formulary as um, modified based on kind of what our common dosages are and that kind of stuff. Um, and so we've started um, a, a very small part of that with a discussion on talk. Um, and uh, Vincent, who introduced himself earlier, is helping to lead kind of our contribution to the OpenMRS uh, REST Web Services module. Um, you know, I think something that was implied by Nikki, but not explicitly said, is that you know, this is a purely Angular app that exists outside of OpenMRS. Um, we host it using Nginx. Um, and then it communicates with the uh, OpenMRS as well as our other data source, which we kind of don't have a better name for, so we call ETL, um, uh, uh, to populate the data that's required by users. Um, we are aware that although the OpenMRS REST Web Services mo module has really is really a phenomenal addition to OpenMRS, um, it doesn't. It does have limitations, um, and we are hoping to be able to start contributing in a more active way to um, making that a uh, more usable and better module going forward. Um, so, with that, I, I just want to stop and see if there's any questions at this point. Because the other thing that I, I did want to talk about, and I think they're online today, is the Worcester State um, Senior uh, Software Engineering Capstone class and our kind of beginning collaboration with them. So before I go on to that, um, are there any um, questions about uh, what we're doing so far? There was one question I saw uh, asking about uh, whether or not you tried React. Uh, we looked at it briefly, but we're essentially an Angular shop and um, didn't feel like uh, we needed to confuse ourselves with another uh, JavaScript platform. Uh, but we, we know Bomni is excited about using React, and I think it will be great to have two applications that are yeah. um, using kind of each of the, the, the two biggest JavaScript pr uh, frameworks for um, various users to pull from. Have you looked at or considered the uh, Reduct as a, can that, can that work in the background in terms of just managing state in an Angular 2 application? Okay. Uh, for, for now, we haven't. Because uh, my understanding is that, you know, React is, is a, it's the view, it's not a full framework. Uh, Angular, I think, is, is, you know, it's a little bit like apples and oranges. Um, but uh, but I, I know part of the um, draw to React is, is the, you know, creating the view and doing it with being able to do everything with familiar JavaScript instead of learning another, uh, another syntax. Um, some, 
I, I've seen some conversations about the pluses and minuses of, of conforming to TypeScript, but those things aside, I think another draw to React is the combination of people using React with, uh, I, th I think it's called Reduct, is the, the state management. And everything I've seen of people using that, it simplifies uh, state in large applications, um, JavaScript-based applications. And so, I, and I think, that's, I think that pattern the reduct pattern is something that is not just limited to React. I think it's something that we could potentially share across. So anyway, something worth looking into. Sure. Yeah, we'd, we'd be very interested to hear people's experiences trying to use React. Um, are there any other questions? If folks joined later, um, the Uber conference puts you on mute by default. So if you're trying to ask a question and nobody's responding, you might be on mute. Okay, well, let me continue then. Um, um, so we've been working um, with Carl Wurst and his students um, from Worcester State. Um, and essentially, um, for their senior capstone, they were looking for an opportunity to contribute to an open MRS project. In the past, they had worked with the radiology module. Um, and um, we are really just kind of in the beginning of this process. Um, if Carl is there, I'd, I'd, I'd welcome his input, but um, there's no need to uh, if not. Um, uh, but essentially, the feedback that I got from Carl yesterday when we were speaking was that one of the advantages of working with um, uh, Angular in this kind of context was that it was a little bit easier for his students to um, get clone the, clone the repository from GitHub and running and then be able to um, at least uh, make some kind of simple UI changes just to show that uh, uh, you can uh, uh, update the code or m modify the code uh, very quickly and easily. Um, and so one of um, our initiatives kind of going forward is we, we'd love to kind of figure out a way to uh, build this um, uh, or to make kind of various aspects of the tickets we have uh, available to the community to help us work on them, um, hoping that you know, in the end, this provides some benefit to the community as a whole, given that we've been trying hard to make this into a, you know, somewhat of a modular design. We realize that, you know, saying that and, and having people actually start using it are kind of a very far distance apart, um, but we think we're at least on the right tr track to uh, enabling that, that, that to happen. So with that, uh, you know, we don't have um, a lot more to add in terms of um, what we wanted to talk to you about today. I think one thing that would be interesting for us to do um, at another time would be to actually go through the kind of steps to um, creating a module uh, in Angular 2 um, and uh, building it into our our web application, just as a demonstration of kind of the kind of simple steps that it takes to get this done. And uh, we would welcome, we'd, we're looking forward to anybody who might have any interest in this, just uh, send one of us an email on talk and uh, we'll figure out a way to get you involved. Well, cool. Thank you for sharing, Carl. Did you want um, did you want to say anything, or is uh, others on the call want to share? Um, I think JJ pretty much got everything that we've been talking about so far. We're still relatively early in the process, but um, we're gonna hopefully this week start working on some issues, and the students are gonna start looking at what it takes to place orders with the uh, REST services. Cool. Are there, uh, 
in in terms of um, I know I know working with Ampath is nothing but excellent experience. I I wonder the um, in general like just in the OpenMRS you know developer community are there aspects that are helpful or or if we as a community kind of changed our ways that would make things easier for groups like yours um, or, or for folks at Ampath to find groups like yours? Um, I'll think more about that. I mean, mo I think a lot of the problems that we've had in the past have just been the large number of frameworks involved in the, the Java core stuff for OpenMRS makes it a really steep learning curve. Yep. Are you, have you guys discovered the SDK? I looked at it last year. Okay. Um, it's much, still, much, much different this year. Right, okay. But still, um, reading the code requires learning a lot of background frameworks. Yeah, yeah. And that, that, I think that's been the biggest problem in the past. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, can I ask a question to the Ampath team? No. <laughs> uh, okay, so it's a no. Good to it, hear your voice. It was a sarcastic, it was a funny no. Yeah, I yeah, would proceed. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, JJ, so uh, actually, uh, first, this is fantastic job. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really good. Uh, I'm just curious about the form entry module. What what you can you give an overview of what has changed and what have, what approach have you used compared to the version one? Okay, so basically, the 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 form schema is still the same. Uh, uh, basically, define how your form will look like in a form schema. So that part is still the same. So we what what changed mainly was um, first of all we are building it on a, Angular two is somewhat a different framework from Angular one and so a lot of things a lot of things ended up changing uh, for instance in Angular one we relied uh, much on a module called Formly uh, this time round we had to formally didn't have a version a, a version for angular 2 and so we had to ditch formally for angular 2 Aww, so basically poor we, little formally <laughs> <laughs> okay so basically we are doing all the work that formally did and on top of that what we had previously so mainly converting the the schema into uh, a version that can be consumed by our uh, form entry. Uh, and so mainly what changes is the rendering bit. Uh, we're doing what formally used to do. Main, that, that includes managing controls, uh, managing the models, uh, managing validations, etc. Okay, fantastic. So you think it's uh, relatively easy to use the form entry module compared to the version one? I mean, uh, I think the last time we tried to have some other team using that module was a bit challenging, and they ended up not using it. So what do you think now? Uh, right now, it's, it's, it's easy to use it, mainly because uh, you do that in, in like three, four steps. First, you fetch the schema. And then secondly, you, you just initialize, you use a factory that you provide to create a form object. And that form object, you, 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 you bind it to an HTML directive, and that's it. And then after the user is done filling the form, uh, you obtain the payload from that form object, the same form object. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I think the greatest limitation for us is just, you know, you have to build a JSON schema, which can be overwhelming. Um, and for um, somebody who's not very comfortable with um, doing it from without a, a, a graphical user interface, um, it's probably enough to um, uh, keep them from using the tool. 
you know, on the flip side, we've actually just recently hired a new um, person to help us design forms. And with mentorship from our team, it's taken him a, a three or four days to become actually pretty good at it. So it's definitely an investment that one would have to take. And, you know, if there was a group out there that was really, you know, interested in, and committed to trying to use um, our version of form entry, we'd be happy to provide some mentorship. All right, thanks. And okay, just uh, this is more like a, I want to know your experience using the TypeScript. Uh, I'm sure you you have uh, you have had some challenges and obstacles when using uh, TypeScript to write the the application. So how would you compare writing the application using ty TypeScript uh, versus the pure JavaScript? Although I know, of course, you get the advantages of, of the debugging and and completion in the in the. Uh, so the the challenge was mainly setting up the the I mean setting up the seed. So, but apart from that, uh, combining that with Webpack. It's, it's just superb. Uh, debugging is much easier. I mean, you get, you get so much control. Uh, what? You said setting up the what? The seed. I mean, the, the project initially setting up oh, okay. bootstrap. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so bootstrapping was a challenge. Uh, but after that, uh, it's been smooth. The learning curve involved is not that much. Uh, initially, initially it was it was opinionated mainly because uh, the guys out there hadn't tried different things using Angular two and TypeScript, and so we had to stick to what was used mostly out there. Uh, yeah, but yeah, it's, it's been superb. It's better than uh, JavaScript. Okay, so are you taking advantage of TypeScript features or, you know, you can write TypeScript, but you can be writing pure JavaScript since TypeScript is just a superset of JavaScript. So I'm just curious whether you are taking advantage and you would recommend somebody to actively use TypeScript instead of just JavaScript. This is actually, it's, it's very subjective, I know, but I'm just, I just want to get your opinion. Uh, yeah, we are, we, are, we, are, we are making use of the TypeScript uh, features that are there. And especially, type, TypeScript plays well with the ID. You get a lot of features from that. Also, it, it helps you design better software. Uh, and Angular 2 is, is the, 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 the module design that we did there was superb. Uh, also, like for for mentry version two is 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 it's it's very easy to extend it to suit your needs just because of type script. Uh, so you can you can easily swipe out the various components that are making up the Angular for mentry that we've done using type script, and so. It's a superb, uh, especially for for open source development. It's really nice. Oh, so it's bad for closed source. Sorry. No, I think in general the the when you have some uh, basic rules set down of it's kind of like Java, how Java kind of has ways of doing things. Um, uh, when you have an open source and a, 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 a large number of developers working on something, having some basic rules of the road helps make things more consistent and easier to follow and learn than um, if you use thing to, you know, things like Perl without a lot of, uh, um, you know, a lot of conventions in place and people are just kind of doing everything whatever way they learned. Is that, Nick, is that fair to say? What you were getting at? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's easy to establish rules. Uh, it's also easy to establish tools that can check for those rules.
just to summarize whatever uh, like okay uh, a good number of advantages that you get from developing uh, using java you're going to get it in typescript so i think it's a positive thing yeah, yeah um so i have another question um you know these have you come across areas where you you wish the rest module would have helped you and i mean gaps in the rest module mm. ah, yes we have uh one of them was the ability to to order encounters by encounter date time descending uh the other one was the ability to search for concept classes uh, to search concept by concept classes uh, but we've since uh, found a way to do it yeah. mainly it was for that it was some documentation gaps but yeah and uh, some some more features uh, we, we will be letting the community know through talk uh, and Vincent will be most involved in that uh, yes I mean, one thing that Burke and I were talking about the other day was just it would be really nice to have some ability to have the REST Web Services module provide notifications uh, as it does stuff um, to anything that might be listening. So kind of the, the use case that we're specifically been thinking about for really a very long time is, you know, we for doing a lot of our analytics, the open MRS data model is not sufficient. Um, and we would love to be able to just, like, let's say a, a new encounter is submitted to have the open MRS, to have the kind of REST representation of that encounter get dumped into Solar or Elastic or something like that. Um, and it would be nice to be able to have, like, listeners that are waiting for, um, the, or that are listening to the REST Web Services module um, with some way to, you know, do something in response to these events. Um, do you find the community supportive enough whenever you've uh, had blockers or issues or whatever? Do you feel like the community has supported you well enough or is the response time okay or do you see their gaps and ways we can do better as a community to support Ampath and the development? Well, we're certainly dependent on Darius. <laughs> I, uh, I can't imagine what happens if Darius decides that he doesn't want to respond to posts anymore. That's our, uh, that you're saying our bus factor is one? <laughs> Maybe like one point something. I, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we just don't know. Maybe it's a much bigger bus and uh, uh, there's just a big deal. But uh, we really are grateful to, especially to Darius and others for their, um, their, their, their responses to our queries. It's, for the most part, I find that there's a response within 24 to 48 hours. Yeah, are there things you feel we should improve or make better to improve your experience going forward? Yeah, we need documentation of the REST Web Services module. Yep, that's, uh, I'm hoping we can get a Google Summer Code project to, to improve that. We've got, we've got kind of the automated documentation via Swagger but there's features missing from that, and the the most important thing that's missing from that is documentation. So it's one thing to have, I mean, it is somewhat helpful to have the Swagger automated build um, to be able to test, and I've used it to, to kind of reverse engineer how to make calls, but, um, but it would be really nice to have those, that ability to test the, the REST API interspersed amongst some actual documentation that describes how to use it. So plus 1000.
Okay. Anything else besides uh, improving the documentation for this module? No, you know, this is our core. I mean, everything we do basically is through the REST Web Services module. So, I mean, we can try and think of more specific things that would make it better um, as we move forward. Um, but I think that those of you who have contributed to it should be really proud of yourselves. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very wonderful addition to OpenMRS. It makes a lot of things possible that were not before. Well, um, it's getting on the later side here in Kenya. So um, if uh, there aren't any more questions, um, uh, maybe we'll call it a night. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time. I know it is late there and really appreciate you guys taking the time to um, to kind of give us an update, show where things are. It's it's helpful to know. And, and it's, it's great to see the work you guys are doing. It's also helpful to know um, kind of uh, especially as you're um, the most experienced, I think, within the community in terms of down the Angular 2 path. And as we're weighing kind of where should we as a community be headed, um, that's that's a critical component, I think. Um, um, so, but uh, um, appreciate you guys taking the time and sharing. Um, I will take, uh, as I said, I'll take the video and uh, we'll get it up on YouTube. Um, so folks that weren't able to join can can still see and uh, um, next uh, next week sorry next week we have um, a Google summer of code update so kind of just planning on uh, projects for Google Summer of Code. I think we're supposed to hear um, by the end of this month, uh, so very shortly within the week of uh, whether or not we're going to be in Summer of Code. Um, and uh, so we're, we're optimistic and we'll be talking about projects. Um, I think we're also due for a topic fest, which is kind of our opportunity to, um, to come up with topics for future calls. We may get that done, do part of that. Um, I'm going to be on wards for the next two weeks. So I, depending on how that goes, we might revisit that uh, um, later in March as well. Um, so but uh, so next week will be Google Summer of Code and probably some uh, uh, talking about what, what things would you like to hear and how would you like to be using this space. Um, and thank you, everybody, for join, joining today. Um, we will hopefully see you and on next week's call. And between now and then, we'll see you in uh, cyber. Oh. Excuse me, Buck. Yeah, sure. Hello. Uh, yeah. Uh, so be uh, before I leave, uh, I uh, just want to say something. I'm uh, uh, I'm Su Chong and I'm from China. So it's now working as a team lead in Bamani team. So oh, you know Darius, he's uh, yeah, yeah. So he's a colleague of uh, us. Uh, but uh, uh, because I am in China, so the OpenMRS uh, talk is could be very late. Uh, it's like uh, 11 to uh, 12 uh, p.m. Uh, in my time. Uh, so ah. it's a midnight. Yeah. Uh, so is there any chance that we can make this uh, call one hour later or one hour earlier or half an hour uh, earlier? Is that possible? Um, it it is uh it is possible i um the there's a, there's two things that run in my mind one is um uh we've we've had this call now for uh, more than a decade at this time but that doesn't mean that just because it's been done this way doesn't mean it needs to continue doing this way and part of our goal is to try to meet the needs of everybody one of the challenges is that there are people the other direction that are getting up very early to make this call and uh, so we were kind of compromising between the two. Um, that said, I've also wanted to try to, you know, get get to a point in the community where we're not dependent on on just one time. Um, 
so uh, we can bring we definitely can have the discussion of can we adjust maybe maybe a half an hour earlier or something like that would be a, a reasonable compromise um, and uh, but I'm also open to the notion of saying you know can we have like a you know an a African uh, you know or somewhere in that time zone driven uh, developer call that uh, that is you know, more fitting for people that are in Africa and Asia in terms of timing and not necessarily convenient for folks that are in the U.S. So, so definitely open to options. What I would suggest is, uh, is moving that forward is just to hop on to talk under the developer category and just propose, say, hey, uh, can we talk about, you know, how we might um, make the developer forums uh, more, you know, friendlier for folks that are in, like, China time zone. Although yeah. there's, there's probably there's probably a few China time zones, but you know what I mean. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so awesome. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining, and uh, I'm sure we'll get. Can you can you uh, teach me again how to say your name? Uh, it's uh, the full name is uh, He Sichong, but you you just a call okay, Sichong. Sichong. Okay. Well, I'll try to do a. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to do a job of not tearing it apart too badly. Um, <laughs> one, of, one of these days I'll, I'll learn some Chinese, but, uh, um, but uh, thank you very much for joining. It's, a, it's great to meet you, and uh, um, I'm sure yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. be talking a lot more going forward. So, excellent. Yeah. Thanks, folks, for joining, yeah. and, um, and uh, we'll, see you, we'll see you next week, or we'll see you in cyberspace. <laughs> yeah, see you. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye.